Hi again, um, welcome to part two of the mini VNA demo. Uh, I've waffled on so much in part one that I didn't leave enough time to uh, show you everything that I wanted to show you. So I'll show you some close ups of the screen and um, the results of the uh, mini VNA. Uh, but I thought I'd take the opportunity to fill the rest of the time on uh, this video and show you uh, one of my homemade. Uh, grid dip meters. This probably should be called a gate dip meter as it doesn't use valves, it uses uh, a FET transistor. Uh, something I made many years ago but uh, very useful. At the end of part one I left you with an image of the dip on my 20 meter inverted V. I'll now show you some of the other items on the Mini VNA display screen. Uh, if I uh, again zoom into the um, 1.5 SWR, not that there's anything here magic about that, but it's just a, a convenient point. And again, I'll zoom in, and that's opened up the band there. So that's saying between 14.099 to. Uh, 14.47 uh, I've got an SWR of 1.5 or less um, and again I'll go up to the, here and uh, we'll look over the entire range and um, that's the dip at uh, 20 meters uh, the 14.2 uh, megahertz when I put in uh, homemade ballon air cord ballon um, uh, there were so many dips and resonances uh, or apparent resonances over this frequency range it was re really very confusing and the um, the ugly ballon gave me the best results you can do multiple sweeps here this is a single sweep so for the duration of that green light it's sweeping the frequency uh, or we can do continuous sweeps and it's it's constantly looking and taking measurements so we, we don't want to do that I'll get some close-ups of the screen I can look at the uh, SWR, get rid of that, the um, impedance, the reflected loss that's measured in dBs against frequency of course, the phase and the uh, uh, series uh, resistance and uh, reactive uh, components uh, or you can look at everything all at once. Uh, so very useful tool, it's got other features that I don't use or haven't used um, but I just thought it'd be nice to share that with you because uh, when I looked on uh, YouTube to uh, see if this thing was worth buying I couldn't uh, find anything. This is my homemade grid dip meter or grid dip oscillator um, made it back in uh, 2002. It's uh, from a circuit in the Radio Amateurs Handbook. Uh, the handbook is actually dated uh, 1976, uh, but there's nothing wrong with the technology. And um, I'll give you details of the circuit in a bit. I've made a range of coils and uh, those are the various frequencies that uh, the coils are good for and uh, I made this when I lived in England so my call sign was Golf Zero Japan X-Ray Mexico now I've moved to Wales it's Golf Whiskey Zero Japan X-Ray Mexico these are the plug-in coils and uh, simply a, a layer of wire uh, wound on a quarter inch jack plug very convenient. 
this is the uh, loop that I'll connect to the end of the antenna or the aerial to uh, to to detect the uh, the dip. So uh, this is inside the instrument, and uh, there you can see the battery that I've soldered into place. A uh, little terminal block is just uh, joining the battery leads, back of the meter there, a couple of coils and some capacitors, and uh, there's the uh, the little FET transistor. Uh, that's a two gang tuning capacitor, and uh, you can see the uh, the top. Uh, section there there's um, uh, four moving plates and the bottom section had a lot of moving plates uh, but I uh, I pulled them off the stator so as both halves of the capacitor are the same and I seem to have scratched on there that it's two times 114 picofarads so I guess that's what it is okay A junk box special uh, this is connected to my uh, 20 meter antenna and this is the little uh, detection coil that I'm going to connect it to. Uh, by the way you calibrate both the uh, mini VNA and the, uh, the grid dip meter against uh, uh, a good uh, receiver. You'll soon know as you tune in you'll hear the, um, the frequency on the radio. Okay, this is the 20 meter antenna and I'm on coil number seven and um, it's a case of getting the coupling between this coil and this coil such that it, um, it doesn't swamp the oscillator and we're looking for a big dip and it's going to be somewhere around the 14 meg and that's the dip. So all I'm doing is tuning the dial a little bit of movement on the dial gives me a huge movement of the meter and uh, that says that it's uh, uh, the oscillator has found the resonant frequency of the antenna and uh, the degree of sensitivity I've just moved this coil away um, influences um, the, the type of reading that we get if we saturate it we'll get a huge reading over a large frequency range by moving the uh, pickup coil away a little bit then we get that nice nice big swing okay I've just uh, changed the coil to uh, coil number five and I'm now uh, working on the 80 meter uh, antenna so again I've got the same little uh, pickup coil there so switch the device on and uh, we'll have the sensitivity fairly high and um, okay on the laptop it's uh, around 3.6 and that's the dip there and that's just over 3.6 on the scale we're on scale number five so See a huge dip for a little bit of movement. Okay, so that gives you some idea of uh, how the uh, grid dip oscillator functions. Okay, that about uh, wraps it up. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, thanks for watching. Interesting to receive any comments uh, you may have on uh, any videos that I make. Uh, enjoy your radios. 73s. Bye bye.